Hello everyone. Today I would like to use this opportunity that I have with this talk to talk about the iClear blog post track and the philosophy behind this, the motivation why me and my four colleagues, Sebastian, David, Charlie, and Claire, we had for this experiment in order to explore new ways to distill and disseminate knowledge in our community. I think one of the main motivation for us comes from the lay of the land in our community. Basically, uh, the privileged publication format these days in our community is through conferences. And with these large conferences, such as iClear, ICML, or NeurIPS, every year, thousands of papers are published in this uh, top year conference. As an illustrative example, more than 1,000 papers got accepted this year at ICL. So for all of us, I think it's uh, fair to assume that it's very challenging to keep track of the latest advance in the field and in a specific topic. And so it's really challenging if we also want to find what to read to learn about a new topic of interest. So we may want to read about uh, normalization, batch normalization, for instance. And it would be very valuable to have a kind of a post or a, let's say, a survey that tries to gather all the information and all the takeaways that, uh, that has been published in several papers at the same place in order to have a kind of clear, compelling and complete introduction about normalization. Another uh, motivation for us was the fact that Nowadays, it seems that we have some challenge in our conferences to pinpoint impactful work. So for instance, the NeurIPS experiments illustrate uh, this idea where it has been shown that there was um, like a very small correlation, let's say at least, between the ratings given by the reviewers and the actual impact, future impact of the accepted paper measured by the future number of citations. And so in some sense, it feels like we are a bit in a sort of reviewing crisis and so on. But the idea with blog posts would be to basically provide a sort of like external feedback after the publication of a paper. And so it's kind of a complementary um, way of iterating on, on papers. Also, like this uh, challenge, the challenging aspect to pinpoint impactful work was mentioned as a motivation of the recent uh, TMLR journal. Also, since uh, a couple of years, it has been um, noticed that we are in a reproducibility crisis. So uh, there is a, a significant amount of work that are hard to reproduce. And when I mean reproducibility here, I mean I'm talking about checking how robust the reported results are with respect to some tuning, some environment, some models, the, the models that are used. And so this is illustrated by the reproducibility program that exists since NeurIPS 2020. And for instance, the numerous workshop on this topic, such as for instance, the retrospective uh, workshop that tries to, a few years ap after publica the publication of some papers, try to get the lesson learned from these papers and trying to figure out, you know, what was the, the main insights and how reproducible the results were a posteriori. Another big motivation for our blog post strike is the current issue with the PDF publication. So it has been extensively discussed in our community already. For instance, there is the missing interactivity aspect in our current PDF papers. So I have in mind, for instance, the uh, rethinking machine learning paper workshop that happened at iClear last year. And I remember a talk by David Ha, where he was basically explaining how uh, through his blog post, he was uh, able to convey uh, something more uh, than what was in uh, the, his PDF publications. And uh, for instance, the interactivity of the blog post or the fact that you can embed videos was really uh, helping to communicate significantly better the potential impact of the work and, and like what was achieved within the work. Moreover, there is some types of data that cannot be uh, easily communicated, let's say via PDF. I'm thinking about some data types that have a temporal component, such as video or audio. It's actually almost impossible to embed them in a, in a PDF. At least it's not done in practice. So we don't see any video or audio data in a given PDF, and they are always communicated via images. But uh, you know, the real data structure has this temporal component 
that would be uh, way much more, uh, way better communicated if we had a HTML format and people could see the video or uh, listen to it. And I think this is uh, very important because it really helps people to basically grasp how challenging a task can be or how impactful the contributions are. Uh, for instance, if you have a reinforcement learning agent, if you can really see a video or some like visualization with some uh, temporal component of what the agents are doing in the environments or uh, uh, these kind of things, it really helps to grasp what has been achieved and how hard the task was. Also, uh, we think that there is a lot of value in reproducing results in the sense that I have mentioned before, uh, you know, like really trying to uh, assess the robustness of a given reported result. And so when you reproduce with added value, such as ablation studies, insights, recoding the whole code base, or trying to extending a given paper or a given experiment, there is like, I think, a lot of value within this context of reproducibility crisis. Also, another aspect where blog posts could bring a lot of value is like value in trying to summarizing, distilling, grasping the essential key points of a line of work or a paper. So it's really in the same vein as a survey where the added value is through insights, extensions, connections between like several published papers that are in the same line of work but have a different perspective. And it's really about like gathering what are the key information and like putting them together in a condensed and like very digestible way. So interestingly, these two aspects of value in reproducing results and value in summarizing, distilling, distilling works is uh, very closely related to the idea of uh, the reproducibility certification and the service certification that has been recently and uh, independently proposed by TMLR. So I, when I watched recently the video presentation of TMLR, I was pleased to discover this uh, idea of uh, certification, this ecosystem of certification at the, as it has been presented by Hugo. And interestingly, one of the motivation for our blog post uh, track is uh, very similar to uh, the motivation for this certification. So we want to give a space for contributions to the community where people would contribute by uh, improving the reproducibility of results and by summarizing slash distilling a line of work. So now the question is like, why a blog post track at iClear? As I've um, discussed it before, we think that it can provide a more dig digestible way to get into a topic by like really extracting what is the essential and really guiding the reader through, uh, you know, the, the topic and the main notions more than getting really straight to a specific scientific contribution. And it has been already, it's not only our intuition, like there is some facts, it has been already successfully used by many researchers, by academic labs and by some companies to communicate their research. And in fact, some publication, some very famous publication and line of works actually got more traction with the blog post than the papers. And why, one reason behind this is that it's really more intuitive and simpler to interact with the blogs, to interact with the model and the results that are presented. But in all these examples, the, the one of the main problem is that it seems that it's already always well-established research or big academic or labs or big companies that are um, publishing blogs. And it illustrates this accessibility issue that basically maintaining a blog is very time consuming. And it's almost basically impossible to publish a blog post standalone. If you want to publish a blog post, you have to invest in a blog itself. And you may have to publish many blog posts in order to gain visibility and recognition. Thus, the incentives are really only long term. And so overall, it's very hard to get a recognition for a single blog. So that's why we wanted to uh, do this experiment this year with the iClear blog post track, where we would have a blog post track with peer review. And really the point uh, would be to uh, give this opportunity to younger researchers that have gathered knowledge about a given topic to publish a uh, standalone uh, blog and without the maintenance burden and without the fact that, that they have to find a template and so. So 
for our, our call, we decided for the sake of these experiments to reduce the scope of our call and to basically focus on posts that distill and discuss previously published paper at Acle. So the, the goal was really to have a smaller scope and really to make this blog post track about the iClear conference. So the blogs have been peer reviewed anonymously on open review uh, by independent reviewers. And sometimes, uh, and I would say more than half of the time, uh, in addition by the author of, of the previously published paper. So we managed to gather feedback from independent reviewers and from the author of the iClear papers, the blog was about. And uh, I think from this aspect, it was uh, very successful. We really managed to see some authors that were very happy about the, the, the blog post and uh, really uh, uh, saw a contribution with this blog post. It was really like communicating uh, the ideas of the papers and going further. And it was really uh, successful at distilling this knowledge. So the, the blog posts uh, are published uh, on our website uh, currently under a unified template. And so what is great for the author is like there is not the maintenance burden and there is no advertisement burden because they will be advertised through actually this presentation and through the iClear conference. And the goal is that these contributions, if relevant, could be cited just like another scientific contribution. And that's really the idea, like, like by, you know, bringing these new insights, there is some value or like by like reproducing results and adding some new follow-up experiments, there is some value that can inspire new works. And so they should be cited just like another scientific contribution, if relevant. Also something that we are experimenting this year is like, we are trying to support comments on the blogs. So the comments will be allowed in order for uh, everyone to interact with the authors of the blog in a very interactive way in a very like quick way. So it's going to be faster than, you know, sending emails to the author if you have questions. So it's, it's going to provide the opportunity for the author of the blog to get very quick feedback and like try to foster some discussions between uh, the author of the blogs and the people that are reading it. <clears throat> So once we had restricted our scope, we had basically two main uh, criteria for acceptance. The first one was about whether or not there was a significant added value in comparison to the cited papers. And more especially, we asked the uh, author of the blog post to mention the um, iClear papers the blog post was about. And really the first goal of the reviewers for this, uh, this year was to assess whether or not there was uh, a significant added value. So we didn't want the blog post to merely be paraphrasing of the papers. We really want some uh, new insights, some simpl like simplifications, really trying to bring something fresh and new about the papers or like trying to gather some ideas from different papers, putting them together or like adding some more experiments. So we really wanted to put the emphasis on this uh, significant added value. And once this added values is assessed, uh, our second criterion was about whether or not uh, this added value was supported by accurate, convincing and clear arguments. So whether or not the uh, contributions were consistent with the arguments used to claim these contributions. So interestingly, I um, mean, to a certain extent, our criteria are relatively close to uh, the ones of the TMLR journal, more especially the second one. And uh, this is not by accident. We really appreciated the philosophy of the TMLR journal and so decided to try to uh, get inspired from this criteria for uh, our quote. Um, our In terms of the difference with uh, the distilled journal, uh, we really think that we are a complementary track. We like, uh, at least like this experiment, try to be complementary with distilled. Uh, for the following reasons. So first of all, this still is really focused on uh, visualization. So the, it, it claims to be a blog post journal with a huge focus uh, put toward visualization. So the, the, the post had to be, um, the, there, there had to be a significant contribution in terms of visualization. For us, visualization can be something relevant, but this is not a necessary condition for publishing blog posts. So we think that we really want just to incentivize people to uh, kind of 
give them a place to publish their takeaways about a given work. And if, if they want to add some relevant visualization, they can do it, but it doesn't have to be the case. Uh, moreover, in terms of content, uh, this still aims at presenting uh, brand new research, while our blog post tracks wants more to be complementary with the uh, main paper track of iClear. Uh, it's more about incentivizing researchers to revisit and discuss uh, other researcher works. So really uh, also, uh, I want to mention in our call, we really wanted to make clear the fact that you cannot discuss your own work. The blog post had to be on someone else's work. You, you cannot have a conflict of interest with a paper you are uh, talking about in your blogs because we wanted to incentivize uh, a discussion by peers about, about each other's work. Um, then uh, the may, maybe the two main other differences with uh, distills are the fact that we are putting ourselves within the conference ecosystem. So we really think that by tying the blog post track with the conference and making it complementary to the conference, it will facilitate its adoption and also foster this like complementary aspect. Uh, finally, we really think that because our community really work with this like conference publication system, it's really important to leverage the momentum of these conferences. And so uh, this still describes itself as a scientific journal, meaning that there is no deadline. It's, it's not, uh, there is not a specific pace for publication which is fine, it's, it's really another take on publication, but since right now our reality uh, in our domain is really that our publication style is really around fast moving conferences, we thought it was very relevant to tie the blog post track with the conferences. So as a summary, we aim to be uh, something complementary to the conferences and thus also to distill uh, by being like more accessible focus on a specific uh, target, which is like knowledge distillation of previously published papers at a given conference and with a faster pace that is synchronized with our conferences. So in terms of positive impact, we really think that it can uh, really have a positive impact in our community by uh, first increasing the value of the papers that are submitted to iClear, accepted to iClear actually because of this like uh, discussion that will emerge from the blog post publication. So the blog post will discuss previously published paper at iClear, thus increasing their visibility and their quality uh, because of this discussion that would put another layer of not peer review, but peer discussion, basically. Um, the other point is that it also provides an incentive for researchers to submit their best research uh, to iClear. The same way that getting an oral presentation or getting a spotlight presentation is an incentive to submit your best work to the conference because high quality work will likely get uh, highlighted in the future through the blog post. It gives an incentive for the researcher to really submit their best at the conference. Finally, uh, we really think that for the reasons discussed uh, in the first slides, it could really have a positive impact by improving reproducibility and transparency in our community. I think I would really like to showcase the blog post, which is the 37 implementation details of PPO, Proximal Policy Optimization, that uh, identify and publicly document all the tricks that uh, you know, were scarcely communicated in the original publication. So because you know, there is like several implementations of PPOs, there is several, let's say, subtleties about these implementations, and many implementation differs by some tiny tricks that uh, appear to be super relevant in practice. Also, we think that uh, this blog post has really a scientific uh, value by itself by collecting the essential theoretical and practical ideas in a given paper and improving their adoption and impact. And for instance, I want to showcase the, the blog post about generating molecular conformations via normalizing flow and neural ODEs, where the reviewers and the author of the paper were really pleased by how well the main ideas of the paper was discussed and how like the author of the blog post were able to introduce uh, new ideas and propose very interesting follow-ups. 
Finally, it promotes accessibility in terms of uh, topics. It's easier to learn about the topic. And uh, I want to illustrate this point with the blog post, Normalization is Dead, Long Life Normalization, that tries to uh, summarize the main takeaways of all these ideas and like summarize what uh, the take have been on batch normalization, on layer normalization, and so on. So uh, one of the main goal of this experiment was also to identify the main challenges that could prevent blog posts to be as relevant as paper uh, publication for our community. And one big challenge, challenge we had to face uh, in our blog post track was the challenge of security. Because running a blog post uh, because it's interactive, it's it's actually some code you have to run to run, and uh, that's problematic because then there is like some potential uh, security problems. Like you don't want to compromise your uh, computer by uh, like running a blog post, and in particular in the context of double blind reviewing, you don't want to compromise uh, the computer of the reviews. So we had to host the submission on a server to make sure that all of them were safe and in order to provide them to the reviewers. The problem is that by doing so, there is now a potential discrepancy between the local rendering of the blog post when the author were working on it and the one that we were hosting on our server. And so we had to kind of find a solution like we used kind of had made the decision this year to host ourselves on our own server, the blog post, but the problem is, yeah, there was some discrepancy between what was submitted and uh, what was in the, in the server. And, and so, yeah, it's a work in progress, but we have really some ideas on like, uh, basically make it, make it in the work better for following iterations. And for instance, trying to better integrate this to open review and so on. Also, there is the challenge of uh, the template and more generally the challenge of the tools, like, for LaTeX, uh, you know, there is a whole ecosystem of tools in order to quickly and easily write your paper in a very satisfying uh, format. And uh, there is some tool for the blog post, but they are not as, uh, let's say, widely spread as LaTeX. So there is some like entry cost, like, you know, um, it, it, it takes a bit of time to learn how to use and write a blog post. And there is some work to be done for sure in order to make this more accessible to everyone. Another uh, challenge is really the long-term continuity challenge. That is something that is very important in our community and general in science is the idea that we want publications to last in some sense forever. Once it's published, it has to be accessible and it has to remain consistent with um, when it was published. And so this is done through archive and open review, for instance, in our communities for published papers. But for blog posts, it's a bit more challenging because uh, once again, you are public, pub, uh, publishing some code, some piece of code, pieces of code. And so basically it's a bit more challenging to ensure that there will be a long-term continuity for this blog post. You don't want uh, the code to become obsolete and you really want to maintain the hosting uh, of this blog post. So this is uh, things we have been thinking of. And this year we have made the, the choice to uh, host all the blog posts on a GitHub page that seems to be uh, relatively robust. But once again, uh, maybe in a near future, we may want to integrate the uh, submission, publication and long-term hosting to open review. Finally, one big challenge is uh, simply the challenge of adoption. We think that, uh, you know, it was a successful experiment and that blog posts are very promising to communicate science, but of course, you know, right now we are just at the state of this relatively small scale experiment. And so there is a challenge of whether or not it will be adopted and like it's, it's, it's entangled with all the previous questions, but if we are able to solve all the three previous challenge, maybe we will, we will be able to make this format more adopted by the community. So our retrospective about uh, this year exactly. So the blog post track for iClear in 2022, we had 62 submissions. We were very satisfied with the number of submissions. We wanted to keep something relatively small for the sake of this experiment. And among them, we, uh, we decided to accept roughly more than 30% of the posts. So like we had 20 accepted posts and one invited post. To put this in perspective, 
to, uh, for instance, the iClear conference when it started. So I checked and I think if I'm correct, uh, iClear 2013 had uh, actually 23 accepted papers. So interestingly, it's a similar scale. And I think this is normal. The first year, you know, it's the year of experiments. And like, if it takes off, then, you know, it, it has the opportunity to grow. So all the posts are uh, currently hosted uh, on our website that is gratefully hosted by GitHub. And we would like to uh, reiterate this uh, experiment for iClear 2023, trying to implement uh, all the ideas we, we have to follow up on this curve. And we really think there is a potential for wider adoption of this format. Uh, either, you know, this complementary track in com within conferences, so like being adapted to um, new rips or um, ICML, for instance, but also, you know, like um, adopting uh, this idea of blog post with like uh, a slightly different scope in the context of journal uh, and so on. But in any case, if you want to uh, discuss these ideas and discuss with us uh, basically the, the challenges and what we have learned from this experiment, feel free to contact us. So thank you for watching. I would like to thank my four coaches, Sébastien Boubec, David Dobre, Charlie Gauthier, and Claire Vernat for their great work. I would like to thank really a lot the iClear board for their trust, allowing us to make this experiment. I would like to thank also Open Review uh, for hosting the reviewing process and helping us to make it as smooth as possible. And also thank you for to all the reviewers for their great work and making this conference possible, this track possible. Thank you very much and see you virtually at the conference maybe.